Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is exponential function, which you have already looked at in your in, in your journey that has brought you to a Calc 2 class. Um, so I'm just going to quickly review it. A function of the form a to the power x, where a is not 1 and a is greater than 0, is an exponential function. When it's an integer, it just means you're multiplying a n times. When it's negative, it means it's 1 divided by um, a to the n. If it's rational, it can be written as p over q. Then it can be considered as the qth root of a to the power p. Here's a concept check to review for yourself. Pause the video and um, try to draw the graph for family of exponential functions when a is between 0 and 1 or when a is more than 1. There are some basic properties of exponents a to the power x plus y is a to the x times a to the y. a to the x minus y is a to the x divided by a to the y. a to the x whole raised to y is a to the x y and a b to the x is a x to the dx. Um, bonus question number two is uh, to prove these four properties of exponent. Um, this is not a formal bonus question um, because this is, can be slightly difficult for um, all values of x, but let's say it's add a restriction, four values of properties for um, integer exponents. Okay. So it should be fairly easy to do what for integer exponents. <clears throat> it's limited to that. So now, now it's a formal bonus question. Sorry. Um, yeah, limits is something that you have already um, talked about uh, briefly, um, just so you are familiar with um, the way I talk about limits is I think of it as what your what is your best guess. Right? It's like um, you're trying to find, you don't know what the function value at a point is, and what you do is you probe around it. And by probing around it, you probe from the left and the right, and you make a guess. That guess is called the limit. Um, now, what you can do is, based on the graph that you made for the family of exponential functions, you can find these following limits. What happens as x goes to infinity and x goes to negative infinity for each of the following four cases. Um, so here's the result. When a is between 0 and 1, this limit is 0. Because, well, if you take a number less than 1, multiply it by itself a bunch of times, it's just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, concept check is convince yourself that these limits make sense. Yeah? Which of them are 0, which of them are infinity. Here's an example, find limit x goes to infinity of 2 to the negative x minus 1 and use the info to plot the graph. Now remember, these kind of things you did when you were plotting graphs and they were called finding endpoint behavior. Limit x goes to infinity of 2 to the negative x minus 1 becomes, you know, you can distribute the limit and then e to the negative x, uh, this should be 2, sorry, becomes 0, 0 minus 1 becomes negative 1. Now the exponential function uh, gets reflected along the y-axis because of the transformation x to negative x. And then this line represents y equals negative 1. Because what this is saying is no matter how big you make x, it, this whole function can never be less than negative 1. Now let's look at the derivative of exponential functions. We start by using the definition f of x plus h minus f of x over h for exponential function. Um, that becomes a to the x plus h minus a to the x over h, which equals limit h goes to zero, a to the x times a to the h minus a to the x over h. Again, I use the exponential property here. I can factor out an a to the x and I'm left with a to the h minus 1 over h. Now because a to the x does not depend on h, I can pull that out of the limit to get that the derivative is a to the x limit h goes to 0, a to the h minus 1 over h. Now assume that the exponential function is differentiable at x equals 0, 
that would mean that f prime at zero is the limit as h goes to zero a to the h minus one over h right and that would actually make this function differentiable for all values of x because then f prime x is just a to the x times f prime of zero now what you notice here is that the value of f prime at zero depends on the value of a which means we can pick an a such that f prime x has a pretty simple expression the simplest value that we can pick for a is so that f prime zero becomes one and that happens when this limit h goes to zero a to the h minus one over h becomes equal to one which happens when a is approximately 2.7 or this number called e and thus we have that the limit h going to zero e to the h minus one over h equals one and for this function called e to the x f prime becomes e to the x so it's a really neat function is it it's its own derivative but this also means that the integration of e to the x or the antiderivative is e to the x plus c. Now this e thing is pretty well, it's its own derivative and its own antiderivative. Now there are many ways of defining e, one of which we just saw. It's defined as the value of a which makes the limit one. Now my favorite, favorite definition has to do with growth rates. We consider this function, one plus one over x over to the x, as x goes to infinity. Um, you plug in values, as x goes to infinity, this expression zeros in on the value of e. Now this function we saw is its own derivative, which is a remarkable property. This means it's a solution of the differential equation, y equals dy over dx.